In the world of competitive sports, there are few images that define a sport as much as its award. And among those, few designs have ever gotten to being as iconic as the legendary BCS trophy famously made out of pure crystal. But in spite of its iconic status, few people know how the crystal football is made. And as it turns out, the story of this football icon is as interesting as those of the people who win it. So that's what we'll be covering in today's video. Origin The BCS trophy is made by a glass-blowing company from the small town of Waterford in Ireland. And while they've been making expensive chandeliers and decorative kitchenware for the past three centuries, for the past couple of decades, they've also been making this legendary trophy. And for that, the entire process starts with designing the football. As you can imagine, making something like this out of glass means that you won't really be able to change a lot once the whole thing is made. This is why the designers at Waterford have to spend a lot of time designing and planning each and every detail of the ball before it can be set in glass. For the most part, the design consists of a scale replica of a standard football, but with a ton of intricate diamond patterns spanning the middle of the ball with a tapering design at the end reminiscent of the chandeliers we mentioned earlier. And unlike other trophies, the crystal football doesn't carry any text or logos on it, denoting the game or the league. All that goes on the pedestal, which we'll get to later. And finally, once the design has been finalized and plans are drawn, the artisans can start the agonizing task of handcrafting the football. But how exactly does something as fragile as glass get turned into as intricate as the crystal ball. Well, the process for that actually starts not with glass, but with wood, or more specifically with making the wooden molds. So you see, before the glass workers can come in to shape the crystal, they need something to help shape the glass with. And while modern factories might use polycarbonate or steel molds for the purpose, Waterford workers instead prefer to use traditional wooden molds. This is done not just to pay respect to the tradition, but also because wooden molds can be carved and shaped manually for custom pieces, instead of having to wait through a lengthy fabrication process like with steel or plastic. Anyway, at this stage, the factory carpenter will take the plans drawn earlier and use them to carve the appropriate curves into the blocks of either pear wood or beech wood that the company uses for their high burning point. These are then used to create individual tools like blocks that'll give the glass its basic shape, dividers that'll be used to press into the glass to divide into segments, and pitches that'll help slowly smoothen the angle of the glass to create the right shape. And once these wooden pieces have been carved and sanded, they can then be brought onto the next station. And you guessed it, blowing. Now, while most of the glassware you and I use is made by automated machines, the basic technique is actually the same as the one used in the production of this trophy. For this, the workers first melt raw crystal as well as recycled crystal scraps in a furnace at nearly 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. This turns the brittle shards into viscous molten matter, which is then taken out on a blowing iron. This is a hollow metal tube that will be used to blow air into the glass once the workers collected the appropriate amount of glass onto the iron. This process, as you can imagine, takes years of practice to make sure that the glass blows out smoothly and without any irregularities in the thickness. This is why the factory trains its workers for over five years before they're allowed to handle things like the trophy. Regardless, these experienced workers spend the next hour or so gently shaping the glass bubble closer and closer to the shape of a football, with the help of the wooden molds from earlier. All the while, he continually rotates and reheats the bubble so it doesn't solidify unevenly. And finally, once the ball has reached the right shape and smoothness, the glass blower can let it reach the next stage of crafting. Cooling this is pretty straightforward, but even here, the slightest mistake can lead to a mishap in football, or worse, a football that might explode unprompted later on. 
So, after allowing the glass to cool in the air just enough to hold its shape, it is immediately put into an oven that is kept at a controlled temperature. This oven then allows the glass to come down to temperature slowly instead of quickly, which is necessary in order to ensure the crystal takes its proper microscopic structure. And once the cooling process is complete and the glass has set into its ideal shape, we can move on to the next step, cleaning. Now, unlike other cast materials made of metal or plastic, the glass surface here is already as shiny as it needs to be, and as a result, no polishing is needed there. But what does need some shaping is the part where the glass attaches to the blowing iron. You see, to keep the glass attached firmly to the rod, a thick ring of glass called a cap is allowed to set around its edge, and that has to be removed so that the crystal can be finished. For this, special diamond saws are used to cut the crystal so smooth that it has no chance of breaking. After this, a similar diamond-coated grinding wheel is used to smoothen the edges where the cap was attached to the rest of the football. All these cut bits will then be recycled to be again used in glass making. But for now, if everything went right, the workers will have a perfectly clear and shaped glass football. But before it can be carved and detailed, there's one crucial step left, quality control. Now, while the crystal used to create this trophy is not as fragile as regular glass, it is still susceptible to imperfections that might cause it to break later on. And for something like this, that's unacceptable. This is why before the trophy can be carved and finished, it has to be checked by some of the most experienced technicians at the factory who check the surface for any signs of irregularity while also checking the refraction through the crystal to determine the thickness of the material. And if the piece fails this inspection, it is smashed and sent to be recycled. But if it passes, it can finally be sent on to the next station. Hand Marking Now, while the glass blowing process is plenty on its own to give the trophy its signature shape, to give it the pattern to make it unique, the factory still needs to do some handiwork and that starts with the drawing of said pattern on the surface of the glass. This process is actually done by an artist with decades of experience who draws the lines on the glass by hand without the aid of any rulers or lasers, the same way it's been done for centuries. And once the exact combination of lines has been drawn, the trophy is set off to the last station. Carving This process is once again done on diamond cutting wheels that have tapered edge to create lines of varying sizes, depths, and shapes. And the artists who do it also have to be deadly precise as they only have the guidelines from the previous step along with the steadiness of their hand. But if they do their job correctly and the lines are carved without any problems, all that's left to do is to clean the trophy before placing it on top of its pedestal, which bears the name of the title, the game year, as well as the winning team. All in all, this eight pound crystal football takes over three months of careful handiwork to create, which is why, according to most estimates, its worth is placed at around $3,000. But that is nothing compared to the value it brings to the players who win it. Click on any one of the two videos on your screen now, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.